Hello, I'm Aaron Matthew Lariosa, DC-based contributor with Naval News. We are here on the show floor of Surface Navy Association 2025. I'm currently here with... Ryan Matta, Marine Engineering Manager here at Serco North America, Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering Firm, and the Deputy Program Manager for the DARPA NOMARS program. Thank you for your time, Ryan. Uh, you know, Naval News has been following uh, NOMARS, Civilly Serco's uh, demonstrated for a while. Would you be able to share any updates with us? Yeah, very exciting news. Uh, this month we'll be launching the vessel at Nichols Brothers Boat Builders um, in Washington. Uh, we're waiting on the next high tide and she's going to go out. From there we'll proceed to about two months of uh, dock trials and testing before we enter a very large and uh, extensive demonstration of the vessel and its capabilities. Looking forward to it. And just to review for our viewers, I, we uh, have the models out. I know we've covered these, but would you just be able to give a summary? Right. So the ship we're building is much like this form factor here. It's around 300 tons. It's around a 55 meter class MUSV. It's completely unmanned. Some of the key features of the vessel is a 90% reliability at sea for a year and uh, autonomous refueling on the receiving end. We recently proved out the autonomous refueling features of the vessel using the PMS 406 O-boats with Surf Devron. Um, that system successfully demonstrated the ability to pump water without anyone on the receiving end of the probe uh, back in September, and uh, we'll be also demonstrating that uh, with the DARPA vessel uh, after we dem after we launch. And this uh, other gray vessel we see here. So uh, we had a program in the U.S. for LUSV. I think that's going to be moved back a little bit, something more in the medium range, like an O-boat, or perhaps we're lucky, something like the DARPA Nomars boats um, are. are uh, currently in the thought process, if you listen to Ali, uh, Admiral Daly's responses uh, yesterday um, to Q&A. So what we're trying to prove out here, though, is the feasibility of completely unmanned vessels versus partially unmanned. This is a much larger form factor than anybody's done a completely unmanned vessel rather than an optionally unmanned vessel. We were able to take a lot of advantage of the space that we retain on the vessel that typically would be reserved for humans, humans on board, like galleys, passageways, um, you know, facilities. And uh, we use that to pump reliable reliability and performance, endurance, range, payload capacity back into the ship. So you're seeing a much larger payload fraction capable of carrying a bunch of mission systems. Uh, we have a very unique uh, power and propulsion system uh, that's incredibly resilient and also can provide a lot of cooling and power to those payloads. Um, and I think this is going to be, if we successfully demonstrate, which we plan to, this is going to be a real game changer in the space. It's really going to change a lot of thinking in, in the naval um, surface warfare and unmanned systems spheres. Uh, you know, um, CNO, her Project 33 plan really emphasizes USVs, and at the show floor at SNA, we've seen, we've seen a lot of companies with USV concepts. What would you say sets uh, Circle Compart compared to your competitors? I think the technology, the integration of um, mature yet slightly modified technologies to make the platform incredibly reliable over long periods of time is going to drive a greatly reduced cost per mission hour. Um, and then also some of the philosophy is a maintenance, so ra the Ramsey aspects of the vessel, it's going to put more payload out on the ocean, more mission systems out on the ocean for much cheaper than the Navy does traditionally. One of the historic problems with unmanned systems is um, they promise to keep sailors safe or pilots safe um, in, the, in the aerial field, but they don't turn, tend to be less expensive than their manned um, counterparts. Uh, we really worked to change the philosophy and the operating principles so that this is much less expensive to do the same mission as a manned platform. Going forward into 2025, what should we expect from Serco and what are you really excited for? So we're really excited for the demo. Um, if we get to do everything that DARPA is planning on doing, it's going to be really, really something to behold. Uh, a lot of travel, a lot of miles on the vessel. Um, we're also hoping to start uh, design studies and a next rev. Um, we're capable of building these uh, ships in very large numbers across tier three shipyards without much improved infrastructure and also maintain them the same way. Uh, so we're kind of looking at this as maybe like the destroyer escort of the future, something that if you prove out and you build enough to get the prototypes in the water and get experience with them. If the time and need, you could build a lot of them very rapidly and they would add a, a lot of capability with not a lot of resource pull on the Navy or their Tier 1 shipyards. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate it.